good evening and welcome to evening prayers on tuesday october the 26th and i'll be with you for the next seven days we're going to be looking at jesus's life and words uh, because i'm using the methodist prayer handbook and they're all gospel lessons uh, set there so it'd be nice to be uh, in the gospels for a little while let's pray We first of all keep silence in God's presence. Almighty and eternal God, you are hidden from my sight. You are beyond the understanding of my mind alone. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are past finding out. And yet, God, you have breathed your spirit into my spirit. You have formed the mind of Jesus within me. You have given me a desire to seek you. You have inclined my heart to love you. And you have made me restless until I find my rest within you. So tonight, Lord Jesus, we come to you. You are the beginner of everything. You are the first and the last. You are the living one. And help us as we worship you in prayer and in reflection to settle your spirit upon ours that we might be one with you. And these prayers we make in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we're going to come to look at the gospel reading. This is from the Lumo Film Group and it is Mark chapter 3. Now we're going to be in Mark a few of the uh, evenings, uh, not all of them, but quite a few. And this is Mark 3, 31 to 35 and it's about Jesus's family, his actual family and how they feel about him. Then Jesus's mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers? he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. So here is attention. Um, a sign of a cult, not the occult, <laughs> that's later in the week. Um, a sign of a cult is that they will often uh, tear an individual away from his actual human family. And uh, a cult will say to the follower, um, you know, we're your family now. You don't have anything to do with the family of the past. And that, that has split many families up. And the stories aren't there of people being rescued, uh, reprogrammed, you know, because they've got so deep into a cult. And yet on the other side, I've known people, I can think of a person right now, in fact, a couple of people right now, for whom they have had such an unhappy real family life, and that experience has not been wholesome, that the church, in all its love and without strings and without pressure and coercion, uh, have become that person's family, their brothers and sisters. And that's a difficult call, isn't it? Because above everything, we do want to support families. We don't want to be, the church doesn't want to be the mistress of the person going to church you know who are you having an affair with well jesus basically we don't want to be that that kind of rival to the person at home who's thinking oh well, the church has taken my wife or my husband or my children away from me and they're always there and never with me we don't want that but we have to be realistic that sometimes we have become by necessity the real family a family of love for those who have none so tonight, that's how we're going to pray. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that for many of us, we have found in the church, 
the family of God. We have known that with all our imperfections and with all the church's imperfections, we can be uh, a loving community. Thank you for when that goes well and that families uh, are witnessed to by that great care and love they've shown to someone. We know it can go wrong. We know we can overwhelm people and people can get lost in all the busyness of church and forget their families and that's not good Lord. But tonight we want to pray for those families where there is that tension because of faith. Where somebody in the family does not believe and they resent the fact that another one does. And we pray for peace upon those households tonight and an understanding and a time to speak and a time to be quiet in those situations. We pray for partners and children, relatives who don't believe and don't hold the values that the person who comes to church does. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would be that bridge to make a way. We pray that churches would always be sensitive to the needs of a whole family and the challenge of the gospel to each one. And these prayers we make in the name of Jesus, who taught the family prayer, as we call it, to his followers. We say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so uh, we're going to finish with a very simple worship song. Uh, you'll know this from quite a long time ago. It says, Father God, I wonder how I managed to exist without the knowledge of your parenthood and your loving care. But now I am your child. I am adopted in your family and I can never be alone because Father God, you're there beside me. So we'll uh, hear this, Father God, I wonder, and then I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good evening. Father God, I wonder how I managed to exist without the knowledge of your parenthood and your loving care. But now I am your child, I am adopted your family and I can never be alone Father God you're there beside me I will sing your praises I will sing your praises I will sing your praises forevermore and I will sing your praises I will sing your praises Without the knowledge of your parenthood and your loving care But now I am your child, I am adopted in your family And I can never be alone Cause Father God, you're there beside me I am